It's, ta it's taking too long, and uh, so I'm just gonna finish the project myself. Just give me all the parts that I bought. Uh, don't worry about installing any of it. I'll just do it myself, and I'll pay you what it's due for labor, and I'll just leave with the car, and I'll finish it myself. And he was pissed. Did you pay him any money outside of parts? I paid him half the labor. He was asking 6000 something for labor because he was taking a motor out and putting a motor in. Mm -hmm. Well, he never put the motor in. He just took the old motor out, which is really the easiest part. Putting the new motor in is like most of the work. Because um, like it's easy. To, it's easy to pull the motor though. take a little second that's why i was saying i was even woodland trying to get it out there to you but if you say you don't even got space to work on it out there either then well it's not the space like i could do it anywhere it's just that if i had the right parts really it's just the time i that's don't have I'm... the time for it man and i don't want to take I, I can take it apart and tear it all the way down and probably find the problem and tell you what to order today but i won't have time to put it back together you see what i'm saying like i don't mm -hmm. want to do that to you i don't want you to be like in a position where you have to call somebody else because it's stuck because then they would probably charge you like a lot to like put it back together because like nobody wants to go over somebody else's work well so. i'm just kind of like starting out and i don't really charge a lot of money because i've just kind of started out doing this and i'm not really doing it for like a lot of money because i have a, another job and everything but i just do it mainly for like my friends and everything like mm -hmm. it's just people that i know because i don't really i don't really put myself out there as like a business i have a business card but oh i was gonna put you out there you have this job i'm gonna lie yeah no dude man, man. not every people call i really don't have time <laughs> for this I, okay. I can do like small jobs but brother this is not a small job like, i thought it was gonna be more like i thought i was gonna be able to progress faster but seeing like all the wiring that's really what's gonna hold it back is all the wiring and the fuel rail going over the top of the manifold because like in order to take the manifold off I think the fuel rail is even attached to it, so like you would have to disconnect the fuel lines as well, and that's just kind of, uh, you know, like I just, I just don't want to get into this thing and then not have the time to put it back together for you. So I don't, I just don't want to like put you in that position where like you end up getting angry that you're like in this spot and you're like, mm -hmm. wow, he should have just told me like right off. The well, that's where I was looking to mess with certain shops because I had certain stuff like that happen. Sometimes it happened and you got it broke down at somebody else's shop and they charge you every day for storage and people end up losing their vehicles. They, because they that, shouldn't you know I mean? do that. Yeah. Like when they, if they start, so I had been through that, right? Yeah. I was in a position with my Camaro where I was having an engine shop, an uh, engine swap done. I was actually having an LS just like this one. Uh, granted, it had different parts on it. It wasn't a factory LS, but it was at the core it was a factory motor right it was a six point it was a 6.0 iron block lq9 motor so it's similar to this and yeah they they took absolutely forever i'm talking this, mm -hmm. this car was there for three months and i was just getting tired and tired and they said that they could get it done in like two weeks once they had all the parts well one day they told me they had all the parts and i was like so all the parts are ordered so y'all should have it done pretty quickly right and they're like yeah but it was like another month and then like a month and a half after that and i was just like man you know what i i just like you know i'm just gonna go get my car because like they just kept asking for more money it was supposed to be like 15 grand total and it ended up they wanted like they went over went to like they wanted 17 they wanted 18 they eventually wanted like 19,900 like for it and it's like they, went, they were trying to go so far over budget. It seemed like the longer it sat there, it wasn't getting any work done. And I would go there every day, right? So here's the, here's the deal. Here's how I know so much. I would go there every single day after work just for like five minutes to check on the car, see the progress, right? Mm -hmm. And every single time, the guy, the, the owner, right? He's the most knowledgeable guy. He's sitting in his chair in the exact same spot 
playing on his phone and watching Facebook and doing videos, but not working on my car. And I would show up there like consistently, like maybe like 5.30, because I get off at like 5. But, and he's like saying that he don't have the time to work on my car. And, it's, and they, these things take time. But every single day that I see him, he's at his shop wasting his time just playing on his phone not working on and he's got other he's got like one or two other employees and they're working on cars Mm -hmm. but they're working on other people's cars and they were working on cars that came in after mine mine had been there longer than most of these people's cars and they were finishing their cars and getting them out of there before they were working on mine and so i thought to myself like this shit sucks i'm getting my car like this dude's not working on it he's just like sitting on it and he's making up more reasons to charge me more money and he's not doing any progress on my car. And, you know, so I came there and I, I had like, I said, all right, I need to, I'm just gonna get my car. And he was like, well, it's not done. I said, yeah, I know it's not done, but it's, ta- it's taking too long. And uh, so I'm just gonna finish the project myself. Just give me all the parts that I bought. Uh, don't worry about installing any of it. I'll just do it myself. And I'll pay you what it's due for labor. And I'll just leave with the car and I'll finish it myself. And he was pissed. Did you pay him any money outside of parts? I paid him half the labor. He was asking 6000 something for labor because he was taking a motor out and putting a motor in. Mm-hmm. Well, he never put the motor in. He just took the old motor out, which is really the easiest part. Putting yeah. the new motor in is like most of the work. Because um, like it's easy. 3, to, it's easy to pull the motor though? Yeah, it was a ripoff, but I paid him that because yeah. that's what he asked, right? And that's legally that's kind of fair. It's not fair to me because he did rip me off. But he was asking for, he was try, trying to, he was really asking for all the labor. And I told him, no, I'm not paying you all the labor because you didn't do the labor. You just did half. Mm-hmm. You just took a motor out. You never put the motor in. You didn't even start to put the motor in. So I'll pay you half. Of, and realistically, $3,000 is enough money to take a motor out and put a motor in. Most definitely. Fairly. Like, I'd say that's like a generous amount. Like, that's mm-hmm. like, probably like mechanic shop type I heard money. somebody else say 1500 is what they charge for a swap. I don't know if they got to so take a motor out and yeah, put, and put another in. one in. Yeah. Well, you know yeah, I mean? that's what I'm saying. It's like when it's a simple swap, yeah, but like what what he was doing was taking a big block Chevy out and putting a uh, LS motor so in. So he had to make a conversion. Uh, like yeah, so but it, but this dude specializes in LS swaps. This right. dude does this is all he does. He know he knows how to do it with the factory. He knows how to do it. It's even easier to do it with the aftermarket stuff, the wiring harness cuz they make it really painless. Like mm-hmm. make, they label everything. Uh they put like like little labels on every connector like right here. This is like the throttle body connector. They would have a like a little label saying like this goes T there. B um uh, or like TB1, like throttle body 1, right? There's only one throttle body. So it would have like a label on there. And you would know, you'd look at that and say, okay, throttle body one. They'd have like uh, coils. They have like C1, C2, because you have the coil one, two, three, four, five. All of the odd numbers are on this bank and all the even numbers are on this bank. So you'd be able to tell with that, right? And same thing with the spark uh, coils and the, and the fuel injector coils, or like not coils, but the injector connectors. They would have all the labels on it, right? And that's mm. what I had. I had an Asus EFI um, kit, and I actually installed it all myself. And it was—I mean, it wasn't hard. It was—it it took about maybe two hours to put it all in, just just routing the wires, trying to make it look beautiful. And uh, it worked out really good. But you end up taking your car back, end up paying them all that money. And I then... paid them. I paid them in total, like in total, I think I paid them like seventeen thousand dollars. And I got, I, I, I fucking entered in with a big block Chevy that had a rod knock and I got back a roller and an engine and transmission and like not even the parts that I paid for. I paid for enough parts for a complete motor. So like you see all these accessories, the pulleys, the belt, the alternator, the water pump, the power steering pump, the air compressor, the idler pulleys, everything, and the hoses. I paid for all that. I paid for a complete car. He gave me none of that. He just you could buy me, another car for seventeen thousand. He just yeah, he just gave me an <laughs> yeah. intake manifold, the engine, oil pan, a transmission, my drive shaft that I still is the same drive shaft, so it, it, nobody really lost or paid any money for that. And my exhaust that but it was all disassembled, right? I and like I paid him all this money, I just got ripped off really, really, really bad. Real bad. And uh because I was putting my faith in this guy that does do LS and like 
The thing about it, he can do, do he can do great work. I've seen it. He just does great work on his car. Okay. He doesn't. He does. He will not put that same level of energy into somebody else's project. I've seen it. He did it to me, and uh, unfortunately, like I, I did pay him a lot of money. I really should sue him because, mm-hmm. like, I did pay enough money for the swap, but I got back just a, a fucking car with no engine and transmission installed and nothing, and just a fucking yeah. bed, a truck bed full of parts. I carried and the, the loss of three months. Yeah, yeah, and like the amount of time that I, yeah. I could have had that thing done. It, it took me about maybe one or two, about a month. You know, I did do it in a month. I, I did, worked on it every single day, and I got it done in a month. Um, when I, And I was doing it while working a full-time job in the military, Monday through Friday, nine, actually really more like 5.30 to 5 every single day. And after I got off work, I would work until like 3 a.m. in the morning, and I'd go to sleep and get like, three hours of sleep, wake back up, and do it all over again. I did that for a month, and I got this car completed, hmm. right? And that, that was the type of, like, work ethic that I put towards my vehicle, mm-hmm. right? That's probably what he put towards his own vehicle with a little bit more knowledge than somebody else's Yes, he, he, so, he, probably, he put that type yeah. of energy towards his vehicle. But the thing is, the difference between me and him, I'm working a full-time job being a soldier, and he is a full-time job being a mechanic. Yeah. He has every single day, all day, to just do nothing but work on cars. And my car was there, and I paid him to work on my car, and he didn't do it. Wow. So I totally got it, and that's why I paid him, is because I couldn't do it myself. I was just too busy. Mm-hmm. But I, I was forced, you know, to end up doing it myself, and that's what I did. I just fucking, you know, nut up or shut up. I just went and did it. Most definitely. And so I still got that car today. It's an orange Camaro. Um, it's got a different motor because it turns out the motor that he did sell me, bro, that motor was built fucking wrong. That motor didn't live. Like, it just, it collapsed in, like, probably, like, a couple hours of motor, like, uh, engine hours. Mm -hmm. He had, I took it to another mechanic, and they looked at what was wrong with it after it started making, like, horrible noises, and, like, it kind of blew. He said that every single bearing in the crankshaft, the mains, were shredded because... LS's have like kind of tight clearances. Oh, well, he didn't clearance the motor. He didn't like measure the bearings. He didn't measure the, t- the clearances. Like he's not, he's an engine builder, but he didn't properly build the engine. In order to properly build an engine, you need to- You know all the specs and stuff in here. You have to spec it. You have to get a micrometer or like mm-hmm. a caliper. Like I have calipers. I don't have a micrometer yet, but I have feeler gauges and calipers, but I'm not building bottom ends. If I was building bottom ends, you'd want to have like a, like a depth gauge or like a micrometer something that can measure very accurately the bore sizes because you have your crankshaft and then you have like shells of bearings that go on top of it that it slides against and it, it rubs well it's supposed to ride against a film of oil and then the main caps are another thing that go around that and it holds it all together but it's not supposed to be compressed it's supposed to be loose enough where there's like a two or three thousandths of a gap for the oil to fill that gap. And mm-hmm. oil, you ever seen how like, maybe you set a Coke can down on a table and it slides mm-hmm. on like a glass table? Well, the water underneath it is creating that, that area super low friction, right? Mm-hmm. That's how the Coke can slides. That is the same principle that's going on in your bearings. It's supposed to create very low friction. Right, the the oil is causing that to happen, and so it's supposed to be not a non. Not too much, not enough. It's yes, supposed to be a non-contact type of thing where the bearing and the crankshaft never touch, but they do sometimes, and that's what causes wear and tear. Mm-hmm. So, but the oil for the majority of it is taking all of the because oil, it don't matter. You can smash oil with a hammer; it won't hurt it. It's mm-hmm. a liquid; it has no shape. Yeah. So it. It causes that. Anyway, I'm going way too in-depth in this. But, that, but that's what, what was wrong with my engine is that he had them too tight and there was almost no clearance for the oil and it was pretty much all rubbing all the time and it shredded it's everything. Shredding it, took it, it took it a while. I didn't notice it when I was... I did notice it looking back when I was tuning it because this motor was really hard to turn over, but I thought that that was just because it had really high compression. Mm-hmm. But I was wrong because like, I spoke to one guy. He said... My motor had 14 to 1 compression. It's got more compression than that motor. And just a regular reman starter turned it up just fine. Hmm. Like, it actually had... It was so hard to turn, and I just didn't realize it because I was still kind of new. It burned up a starter. Like, I had to buy a new starter. Because, like, in the short... Like, this, we're talking, like, days of, like, yeah. just tuning the car and starting it. And I was starting it frequently, but 
It shouldn't be burning up a starter. Those things are supposed to last years. And it burned it up pretty quickly. So I went and got another starter. It was like a hundred something dollars. Put it in there and it worked just fine until the bearings shredded. And then the motor had a serious problem, right? It could have been prevented if he had just done, done the, the right things, right? And then here's, the, here's this other thing, right? This is something I didn't tell you. I was a fool. Originally, I bought a six liter LS. Okay. That was a turbo motor. It was gapped for boost. That's what he told me. It was a backup motor for his car. Okay. So Before was... we put it in, he came to me one day and he said, hey, you're not going to run a turbo on that thing, are you? I was like, no, I kind of want to keep it naturally aspirated. I don't have money for a turbo. And he was like, well, I got this 6.2 liter engine and it's a bigger motor. It'll make more power naturally aspirated. And the other one's gapped for boost. I run turbos. How about I don't charge you any money out, I'll just give you the other one. And you'll have more power for your application and I can keep that motor. And that way, I'll, when I put it in my car and make turbo power, it will be fine and you know we can both be happy. And to me, it sounded like a good deal. But now that the motor's shredded, I kind of feel like he knew something. I think that maybe he knew it was bad and that's why he wanted to sell me that bad motor so he could keep the good motor and get profit anyway. Mm. So I don't know if he knew that. I can't really prove it, but it is shady because I did pay for the other motor and then he came to me and asked me if I wanted to swap. Yeah. And I was a fucking idiot. I, I, just, I had too much trust in this guy. I was a fucking idiot. I, sw I said, yeah, sounds good. And it would have been a good deal had the motor been good. Yeah, but you did it based off how his cars was running or the work that you know that he had done before yours. I so was, was like, completely, yeah. you know, going off of trusting him. And uh, uh, just, just don't do business with that, guys. Uh, yeah. Stable performance on, like, Veterans Avenue, clean. I haven't heard about him particularly, but yeah, he's, I know now. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, the owner's name is Doug, and he's got his wife and... I actually um, am best friends with uh, one of his former employees. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a veteran just like me. He used to be a track mechanic. And he told he's, he's actually the guy that told me about Doug uh, and his shop and everything. And I, I went there because my buddy said he was good at doing LS swaps. And he is. But he didn't tell me that he's kind of shady. Right? So I went there. But... After I told my buddy what happened to me, he said, yeah, he kind of did the same thing to me with a motorcycle. He sold me this motorcycle for like $7,000, but the motorcycle was kind of a piece of crap. And the motor hmm. actually blew up like after I bought it. And I was, I was like, crazy. wow, that's but the same most, thing that happened to me. I think most times people don't want to put the word out that something bad happened to themselves so that word don't get out about the person who actually did the damage. More like, you know what I'm saying? You kind of feel like... Well, this is not this is not like an isolated thing. I, I've, If you look at this guy, like, so one of his own employees, he has employees quitting his workplace, like, a lot. Oh, uh, well. A lot. Like, I know currently three employees that have stopped working for him in like the span of like a couple months oh yeah right and one of them is my buddy one of my my best friend the other two i don't know them personally i don't know really where they're at now but they're not there they quit working and they were every time i was there they were always like upset and like so like i don't think he treats his guys very well um and he only has like one employee and then the rest of it is like his family he's got his wife and his son and him he does work on cars his son does work on cars and he's got this one guy and he stays there and he kind of like i don't think he's ever gonna leave because he kind of like saved him since we, he was like a kid mm -hmm. and so he kind of like he's not his son or anything but he's kind of like family at this point so i think they're gonna stick together but other than him his wife and his son and the other guy that's it and then everybody else that seems to go to work there they don't stick around very long got uh, a question though i mean outside well, of him though so Knowing that this is what it takes for this, what do you think yeah. about the entire engine swap, though? You think oh, that'd be easier to swap, do? I mean, it would be just as in depth, but more like, you know, just take the hood off, get a. Well, I mean, will it take would less it time? Take, the, it take less time. Um, I mean, I know you're getting off into I the motor, it and it'd probably a, be a little bit more technical. I think technical. it would take the same or more time because as much stuff as I got to take apart for this. You still, if you're taking the whole engine out, that's more stuff to disconnect, mm -hmm. you know? And then you so have I'm looking to, along the lines then of... Then you're looking at motor mounts, transmission mount, tri drive shaft, 
taking the radiator fans and everything out because like the clearance from here to here is not enough you have to move this forward kind of, this motor kind of forward with a crane mm -hmm. and then lift it out so this entire radiator and fans have to come out and then you'd have like maybe from here back i think or like no this is a this is a frame so if this goes straight across you would only have like from here to here um unless i'm just you thinking got, because i have another motor that i could put in here now and this one I know needs work, but it can get worked on as time. You know what I mean? Over time. Yeah. If and you it, were able to take that way, I could still use this one because I'm not really tripping about if the whole other truck at all. If you were somehow able to like take the one truck without a good title, and then this one's a good title, take the motor that's got a, a issue and put it in that truck, mm -hmm. and then take that motor that don't have no issues and put it in this one, mm -hmm. you would be able to sell this truck legitimately for more money, and it would be worth more money because it's got a, plan, good, got a good I title. wanted to look at this to make sure I got this diagnosed to see how a job it was, and then yeah. you finally was able to come out here today to see what's going on, but I feel like... Uh, yeah, it's just hot in here. I was it's ready to, so hot. Bro, I'm ready to open it and get it done. But you started telling me about your car stuff. So okay, I bet. I think we should open it. I think yeah. that the, the car is radiating heat. And okay. Causing this well, we'll do that. Um... So let me try to tell y'all, man, like, hey, man, can't stand the heat, get out the kitchen, you hear me? Can't stand the heat, get out the kitchen. Hopefully y'all can hear me over the AC, man, but outside of that, though, man, subscribe to the channel. Invite me, man, my second YouTube channel, you feel me? I'm over here waiting on y'all to get there. Tap in. I actually got two YouTube channels, so there's two different QR codes on each side of the truck. Just check them out. All right, I got you. Yep, I do daily vlogs almost every day. Or did you take a picture or scan it? I took, I took a picture of it. Yeah, you, oh, you had to scan if you take the picture? Yeah. Oh, okay. Great. It reached? Yeah, KG go hard. KG go hard. That's me, bro. Yeah, I just subscribed. I appreciate you, man. All right, no problem. Yep. 